we're going to CBD, we're going to town, we're going to uh, parliament, we're go we are coming here to get out. <laughs> It stings, bro. It stings. Oh, we are tired. Very, very much tired. Maybe I'm a fighter, never backing down. Maybe I'm a soldier, standing my ground. So if you're gonna fight me for my heart, are you gonna get these battle scars? What's going on, guys? It's your man Jackson Cooper with my man Jeff here. And we are live from Nairobi, Kenya. Now, if you've seen my last video, you know that me and Jeff went to the protest here in Nairobi. You guys had like a lot to say, you know what I mean? And we want to address some of those things. So Jeff, pretty much just let them know, how was your experience with the whole protest? The protest was quite eye-opening. Mm. I got to experience the, I'd say first half of it with Jackson before we were separated <laughs> by the tear gas and all the running. No. It was pretty hard locating this guy, honestly. <laughs> uh, it was eye-opening to what the government is doing to us. Mm. And I saw it, and he saw it too. And yeah, it was quite, quite a new experience too. Having tear gas all up in your face, mm. in your eyes as well. It's crazy. That was crazy. All right, so we started off, you like came over here and you had the, uh, you had the flag and the whistle. Now, I saw some comments saying, I'm going to need more than a flag and a whistle to go to a protest. So, so like, what was your thought process behind giving me the, the flag and the whistle? Uh, I just wanted you to feel more Kenyan mm. and more involved in this. Because who knows, maybe it might be like, what, 2% Kenyan? Yeah, 2% Kenyan. Yeah. So, I wanted you to really be part of it and have your mind and heart in it too. Mm. And giving your Kenyan flag would only do that. Yes. Yeah. And the whistle too. Yes, yeah, yeah, blow the whistle. So, okay, so like now we're going to the park that we're walking. Now, you told me that I was asking you questions, and you were telling me about the guy Rex that passed away, rest in peace to him. But a lot of people died on the day that we went. So, what was your thought process as we were going to this protest? As I was going to the process, I didn't want to. I didn't want to think about the case scenario of me dying. I didn't want to think about that. Did I know that people might die? That day, I did. Mm. I did. Mm. But I just wasn't expecting it in the way that it actually happened. Right. Because the police had a sniper on a rooftop. Mm -hmm. And that was very unconstitutional and very dangerous yeah. to fire live bullets from the sniper to innocent, harmless protesters. Mm -hmm. They weren't even causing no violence or nothing. So out of the blue, uh, your brains just get shot out. You can imagine the people who are standing next to them. That was insane. That was insane. So a couple people died. Eight people died during the protest. Mm. But also, on, on that news, I'm receiving information that the more people died mm. after that at some place called Gikurai. Where to get the ride? Yeah, a lot of people died. It was like a whole massacre. Mm. But did the news cover anything about that? No. Was there anywhere on our local uh, news broadcasting channels? No. But it was all over Twitter, though. Mm. Yeah. Wow. So, you know, rest in peace to those people, man. Um, you know, being in that, like, it makes you look at stuff a little differently for me. Like, it's more real. Because you see, like, like, you get, like, the tear gas and you get um, things like that. So, because I was seeing that red gas and that white gas and i'm like i've like never been tear gas so like what was what was your thoughts when you were down there you know it was my second protest going mm -hmm. and so like the tear gas wasn't really a big scare for me because <laughs> that's i was they literally gonna have fun with that. they're gonna have fun with that i was man. that's what i was expecting honestly yeah so at times you were like yo the tear gas i'm like come on, it's, <laughs> it's just tear gas that's man. what's up it got to a point where, but they started doing it excessively. They were yeah. putting in like four canisters, mm. filling up a whole street with tear gas. Mm. It was excruciating for the eyes, but uh, I did have some water and I got some toothpaste too. I saw that. So like, is that like a thing to make you feel better? Uh, not, not make you feel better. More like, see what, how the, from what I understand, mm. how this thing works, 
it has some particles that cause irritation when it touches the skin or even worse, your eyes, right? So if you have the toothpaste close to your eyes, it absorbs a lot of the particles and mm -hmm. you get way less of them in your eye. Mm. Yeah. Okay. All right, let's just get to the point that people probably want to know, right? Mm -hmm. So I had to dip. I had, I had to get up out of there. I looked back. I said, Jeff, you were nowhere to be found. <laughs> now, everybody's asking, is Jeff okay? Is this in the... He's right here, guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, what were you thinking at that moment once you got separated? Actually, funny story. Remember the posters I had? Yeah. I printed them out for myself and a couple of my friends, too. Mm-hmm. So when you give the guy the protest, I remember when you give him the signs mm -hmm. or carry, <laughs> then at that moment, they find a canister like close to where we're at. Uh -huh. And this guy did not even waste time. This guy was like, yo, that was... Then you, you also took off, right? Yeah. So I was there. Um, I, I, run, I started running too. But I look back, I'm like, my, my posters are down there. Let me go, let me go grab them. Uh -huh. So I look at you, I look at where you're heading. Right, I'm like, he's heading that way. I'm going to follow him. Then I go for my sign boots bar. I go back for my sign boots. Then start running towards you. But immediately I look up. I'm not seeing you anymore. I'm go, baby. <laughs> okay. Yeah, but I was kind of worried. Because I was trying to hit your phone. I was yeah. trying to hit your WhatsApp. I'm not seeing nothing. It's only one tick. Yeah. yeah but I stayed there for quite some time. Okay. Then eventually he texted me. I was like... He's safe. He's, he's, like, he's, okay. he's safe. So guys, all right. So now we're at the point to where me and Jeff got separated. I was safe, but he went into the heart of the protest. And now we're going to give him the floor. And tell us about what you saw down there, man. I mean, like, I know this was graphic. Um, but let the people know what was going on down there. First of all, they stopped our bus from, they stopped our bus from entering town, right? Mm -hmm. So we had to get off. This was forcefully, by the way. We were tear gassed off the bus. Then we had to walk around. You know, there were cops blocking the entry. Mm -hmm. So I had to find another route to get into town. Mm. Uh, so this is after I lost you, we found a route to go into town. I was amazed and so proud of the number I saw. Mm. There, were, there was a swarm of people everywhere you went. Every single street in town, there were so many people. Like, you couldn't even compare it to what the news was covering. There were way many people than what you were seeing, I'm telling you. It was all peaceful for most part of the day. Mm -hmm. It was just people marching around, making noise, yeah. adding out their views, um, you know, just trying to be seen and trying to be heard. Mm -hmm. Then it started getting a little bit heated. They, were, they tried dispersing us with tear gas, but at this point, we've had like, it's like the 20th canister we're seeing, so... Like you could draw, you could do another one for crying out loud, you know. People weren't going nowhere. But is it true? So like somebody was saying that Kenyans are able to catch the catch the canisters <laughs> in the air. Like is this true? Like or were they lying? Yeah, no, nah, no, nah, it's true. It's true. Hey, not catching me. Uh, more like when it falls down. Uh huh. You have like four seconds to, to pick it up and throw it to send it back. Right. Okay. Like wow, some, that's tough. Like some Call of Duty type. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, the, the guys even kicked it, kicked it back. But it got to a point the cops stopped doing it like this. But it got heated. This is where the story gets interesting. It got heated after people managed to get to the parliament. Mm -hmm. I told you like we're going to get into parliament. Yeah. Right? Yeah. People did do that. Mm -hmm. Go into parliament. And so it started off by people at, at, on the fence. There was a barricade trying to ask to stop us not from getting in. Then the members of parliament, the ones making all these approving all these unconstitutional laws mm -hmm. were told to stay inside parliament because you know it was obviously not safe for these guys right if they stepped out that would have been it for them so a helicopter came to rescue them why yeah <clears throat> a helicopter came to get them out because you can imagine town is surrounded with people like i'm talking close to a million people you just said a million people sorry Dave. a million people guys and I didn't want to be around like how many people do you think were down there where like where like me and you were? Uh wait, wait, wait. Where where the uh, well, first where you saw Tia Guess for the first time? Yeah. Uh not that many people around there. If I it, didn't want to be around that amount. So if it's a million people. There were so many people. That's intense. Yeah. So but there's this one member of parliament. His name is Babu Wino. Mm. Yeah. 
So he was against this whole finance bill. So when other guys were being rescued by a helicopter, this member of parliament literally crossed over the fence to join the protesters in protesting. So when members of parliament got inside parliament, that's when the live bullet shooting started. You ask me. So they did that to really scare people and true to the word, people did get scared. People got into parliament, people ate parliamentary food. The protesters. I saw that. that was hilarious. I mean, like, sorry, like I'm not <laughs> I'm not like choosing sides, but that was funny. I'm not gonna lie. That was really that was really us making our point. Yeah. You know? And I did not want it to reach to that height, because you know, mm -hmm. parliament is really uh, from a patriot's point of view, parliament should be kind of I, I don't wanna say safe with me. Let me ask you this. So is so is Parliament like the White House to America and Kenya? Is that like the like the top building here? Uh, I'd say the top building is State House. Ah, yeah. So it's not it's not literally the White House, but it's it's something close to the White House. You important. Could call, yeah, it's it's a really important. Oh, okay. Thing. okay. So people really getting in there uh, on non official business, stealing the food there and. Destroying flags that was that was it. I saw that man. I didn't want it to get to that point honestly. And do I blame the people? No. Do I blame the president? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So people people when I heard people got shot, mm -hmm. I received calls from a couple of my my friends, I received calls from my mom mm. telling me that the situation's getting bad, you need to get out of there. Mm -hmm. Right? Uh, this was after like hours of marching. And it was like 3 p.m. by then. Mm. Yeah, so I was like, yeah, I don't need to get out of here because yeah. I have a life to live beyond That's right. Kenyan politics. Mm -hmm. uh, so I got, oh, wow. so I hopped on a, on a motorbike because mm. there were absolutely no buses, no other means of transport other than motorbikes. So I hopped on one. Then on my way out is when I saw uh, a dead body lying on the street. This guy was very white. He had blood stains on him. He was so sad. He was traumatizing, actually. Mm. But I didn't throw up or nothing. I thought I would, but I didn't throw up. Mm. I, that's when I really felt the the tears of the people, and I really got enraged too. Then on my way home, after seeing the dead body, I was shocked out of my life. On my way home, I met one of those water cannons. The trunks that have the water cannons on top. Wow. Yeah, so they were firing the people and the water was like pink. I'm not I'm not so sure what what's inside the water that I, I heard the next people spin go yeah, yeah, that's what I heard. Yeah. So I literally saw it up close. It didn't hit me, but I saw it up close. It hit one of the protesters. This guy was literally flying in the air because of the pressure that was there. What? Yeah, and it was pink everywhere, there was a lot of pink. But luckily they hit me and I managed to go home. Wow. Yeah. So Jeff is safe, guys, man. Like that that sounded like a pretty intense experience. I was. I was. Very necessary too. Yeah. Because right now I feel like I'm more woke on all this. And I previously was not about the whole I wouldn't really push someone to vote. Right. But right now I do feel like that is a great power we have as citizens, and everyone who's watching this, every Kenyan or American, you should get your voting card and participate in your next election. Yeah. I want to read some of these comments, man. I'm not gonna lie. Oh, from the video? I want to get your opinion. Uh, uh, let, let me hear it. So, somebody says, I'm disappointed in you, Cooper. You spoiled the experience for Jeff. The boy was ready for anything. He made it clear from the word go. But one tear gas later and you start killing his morale by pushing him to retreat and go back home. Let me respond to this first. I don't think there was any killing Jeff's morale. I think that he had the same morale if I was there or not. I was just letting him know that that's not what I'm about. Now, Jeff, how do you feel about that comment? Cooper was really brave, actually, because going there, actually, getting on that bus did take a lot of courage. But we should have progressed a little bit, if you ask me. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> we should have progressed a little bit. Okay. Because even the tear gas thing, like, it stings, yeah, but after, like, a minute and a half, probably two minutes, mm. three minutes after, you were, the effects were less, you know? 
so we should have pushed all the way through together. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So he he might have a point, but don't take it light. Going down took a lot of courage. Mm. So yeah, congratulations too. But next yes, time, you gotta go deeper. Huh? Next Pause. time we gotta go deeper. Okay. So somebody else says you wanted to experience the protests. So please respect it and stop complaining, bro. Where in America are you from? Well, I'm from Columbus, Ohio. And I don't think I was complaining. I think I was just stating how I was feeling. And I was letting Jeff know, if anything jumps off, I'm dipping. <laughs> it's that simple. So Jeff, how do you feel about that comment? Ah, uh, no, nah, it was very validated how you're acting. All this for the first time. Right. And seeing those officers in uniforms with clubs they were holding and tear gas mm -hmm. everywhere. It was right for you to be scared. Listen, guys, I wasn't like, oh, my God, I'm scared. Listen, you got to be smart and you got to be on point. If I could have been out there, that could have been me getting shot in the head. And then y'all would have been saying, oh, you were stupid, you're going. And so, come on now. Let's think. So this is the easy one right here. Mm -hmm. Where's Jeff? <laughs> uh, here I am. Uh, I'm safe. I'm sound. No injuries whatsoever. Somebody else says, you left your bro. WTF. I didn't leave him. Like, when you're in like a situation like that, guys, you're going to get separated. And like Jeff said, we made sure that we got in contact. He was safe. I was safe. So that's where that ended. So what about you, Jeff? Nah, he didn't actually leave me. It was people who are running left, right, and center. And you know, you it's our fight or flight. And this game was flight. It was flight, especially on him, man. He had some quick feet on him. <laughs> Big up Cooper for participating. We're proud of you for being an honorary Kenyan. Power to the people. Yeah, I, I mean, guys, I wasn't there to protest. I was there to more so, um, you know, showcase it from a Kenyan's point of view. You know, uh, thanks to Jeff, he um, invited me. That was very uh, gracious of him. But I wasn't there to protest. I was just showing it through my eyes as an American. And um, I am happy that me and him weren't hurt, but it is unfortunate that people were hurt, and what's going on is very unfortunate too. So, um, what are your thoughts about that comment, Jeff? Personally, I was there to protest, mm. and I went there with one goal and one goal only to air out my views and how I feel about the whole political situation. And you would argue it out that I'm only 19 and he's not validated for acting that way. He doesn't he doesn't even pay tax blah 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 but really it's i don't want it to affect me when i get to a certain point of my life you know it's mm. better deal with the situation right now at bay plus um energetic had the had the free time that day and i was there to protest and nothing was holding me back nothing was holding me back. it's the young lion right there yeah. nothing was holding you back nothing was holding me back i can respect that in I can respect that. Now, guys, if you haven't seen this video, check this video out. I think personally, to be honest, this is the best protest video that you're going to see as far as like interaction with the people and just crisp and clean content. So check this video out. Guys. Someone says, this young man is a true representation of the current generation, not only in Kenya, but Africa. The era of corruption with impunity and division politics is way over. The youth are taking over to define their destiny. See, the thing is, um, there has always been a lot of tribal base in the past years, and it was a big cause of conflict and war and violence. This is in like 2007, 2017, like back in the day, when most of us didn't have the mental capacity to grasp what's going on. Mm. But with this new young generation, I feel like I, would, I, would, I don't even care if you're what tribe you are, it might be Kikuyu. Mm. Might be Embu, you might be, I don't know, you, wh whatever tribe you are, that doesn't really matter. And it doesn't speak of who you are. So, me to discriminate someone off of what tribe they are, I'd honestly uh, care less about your tribe, it's more like who you are. So, a lot of young people kind of like charisma in them, and it's because of that uniting us, is, us being united for a similar cause is so easy. Mm. And I feel like if we keep that unity alive, and we, you know, just stay positive, think of our country positively. This is bad, but doesn't mean that it's going to slow us down as a country for any longer and actually has. 
So the new generation is way more cohesive than mm. the old ones. Also on the politics part, like in the olden days, like two presidents back, there was this president called Moi. Mm. Uh, the late honorable Moi, pardon my French. So this guy was uh, an inhuman president, let me say that. Really? Yeah, from the stories I heard, I didn't get to experience nothing from his reign, but from the stories I heard, this guy was torturing people who were against his regime. You couldn't even mention his name, not unless you're talking something positive about the president. So people really lived it pure. No one was talking about it, but because no one was had the guts to actually talk about it. Mm. And you know that time, the internet wasn't as uh, developed as it is right now. Right. So someone could just disappear. He could just make someone disappear. Like, have you ever seen like one of those, uh, the dictator? Have you seen the dictator? It's part where if the president wants to go on, he just like, he talks to you, then maybe you say something that irritates me. Mm -hmm. And the president just looks at his guy, he's like, oh, you get him out of here. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, like execute this guy. Right. Yo, so, like, that's the type of environment you were in. Mm. So you couldn't talk trash about this. You couldn't criticize him in any type of way. So our parents, having lived under that fear, yeah. it becomes easier oppressing such people. Mm. But, like, with this new blood, you know, we're not getting oppressed or nothing, because I'll show the world if you oppress me, you know? Mm. Yeah, and I'll speak up on that. So the era of oppression in politics has no has will come to an end. Uh, and he said Moy, that just made me think so like that's Moy Avenues after him, right? Yeah, Moy Avenue. Interesting. Okay guys, so listen man, travel man, because I just thought I'm like, okay, like I've seen that. Now, I want to bring in a special guest, guys. It's, it's, it's gonna be like a twin of Jeff. And then like we're gonna see why this person was not at the protest. Let's get into it. Appreciate you, Jeff, man. Thank you, man. Okay. You got any like socials you want to leave for the ladies, man? Something yeah, like I do actually. Uh oh. I do actually. Uh -oh. My Tinder name is. Whoa! Okay, guys. So here we have Miss Juan Geishi. Now, people were. Somebody left a comment. <laughs> <laughs> it said, I hope Juan Geishi's safe. I don't know what that had to do with anything in the video, but she's safe right here. So, Juan Geishi, I'm, I'm going to just leave you with like a simple question. Yeah. Why did you not come to the protest? Well, first of all, um, there are more ways to protest other than be physically there. That's right. So I did protest in, you know, social media wise, posting the, there's a hashtag that we made sure was viral. So posting the hashtag reject finance bill 2024. So I might not have been there physically, but I made sure that there was a social media presence. And also I'm a woman, like, <laughs> Let's be I, real, I guess. <laughs> Come on, dog. Girl. I, and I knew if I was going to go with you guys, I would slow you down because oh, you guys man. are fast and I am slow. So, <laughs> so I just made sure that you know I was home safe. Um, when they lost uh, each other, when Jeff lost Hoop, Jeff texted me and he was like, "Yo, I lost Hoop." <laughs> I was worried. I was like, where is he running to? Where is he running to? But I knew, I knew it was like fight or flight, and Coop is flight. So. That sounds bad. Uh, but it's it bad like, okay, guys, so thank you for watching this video. I hope all of your questions were answered. And make sure you check out the original video, Protest in Kenya. I feel like it's the best one on the internet. And you know, tell me what you think. I wanna thank Jeff and I wanna thank Juan Geishi. And until next time guys, be blessed, stay safe. Live from Nairobi, is. Hey. <laughs> I'm not trying to hurt you.